Hi guys, this is me again at Leco from IMO Games and finally it is time to stream Hatvan. Yeah, today we are going to Hatvan. This is uh, January, 7th January, it is uh, uh, Christmas, yeah, our Orthodox Christmas, so Merry Christmas to all our fellow Serbians and uh, our Orthodox brothers, yeah, Russians, Ukrainians, Greeks and all the others. Georgians, so uh, at the beginning I want to mention to you that today I have special guest, uh, new cameraman, he's gonna uh, photo shooting for me today and uh, we are going to visit together Hatman. Uh, we are starting a visit to Katman, uh, we are going by the train, basically, so we are uh, waiting for train here in Hyasberin. So from Hyasberin we are going to get to Katman with train and then we are going to continue for train, so see ya there. So guys, here we are in train, uh, we are traveling to Katman uh, and as you can see, uh, everything is pretty new and modern, so we are going to get there pretty soon. So it is going to be a really awesome day for exploring the city. I cannot wait to show you Hatvan. So it is going to be a long day and we are going to visit a whole lot of places, a whole lot of palaces. I already mentioned to you uh, Rasalkovic Palace. You are going to visit uh, Hati Castle also. And uh, I hope that uh, the main castles are open today. And today it is uh, a rainy day and it is a uh, market day. So we hope that Varsha is going to work. So we are going to see when enough. So what should I say to you guys? See you in Tatvan. So guys, here we are in train. We are traveling to uh, Hatvan uh, and it is going to be a really long uh, day. We are going to visit a whole lot of places. So as you can see, everything is modern and new in this uh, train. It is really awesome first class so uh, we are going to approximately stay there for, for 50 minutes once we get there we are going to visit as I already mentioned to you the old town center and the Salkovic palace and all the other palaces we are going to visit the Hanty castle and I hope so that uh, the main castles uh, are working today so it is going to be a long exploring so we are going to try to just stream for you every part of the city. So see ya guys in uh, uh, Hatvan. See ya. Train is, as you can see, is pretty great comfort. It has really great comfort. It's like uh, you are in your home. It is so warm up and you can see here uh, many places to put your things on. And uh, you can see also uh, for electricity connector so but currently yeah I am uh, sitting uh, next to the window and you can see the whole panorama of Hungary stream is it's really nice yeah because so everything is flat in here Hungary is really beautiful so this is uh, Pannonian uh, you can see uh, basin or Pannonian flats and it is pretty famous and it is pretty old the old Romans had their settlements here and in Hungary it is the biggest flat in here so as you can see there are no uh, mountains here it is no mountain region everything is pretty flat but it is really nice and peaceful you can uh, live pretty peacefully here in Hungary it is not like uh, yeah it is Serbia is also peacefully but more in Vojvodina you all know in Vojvodina it is also Pannonian region so Pannonian region is really nice place to be awesome so this surface is really uh, great for living and for making your or families and homes uh, in here uh, you can see that uh, this surface is flattened and uh, uh, many many agricultural agricultural uh, cultures can send here basically uh, it is it's really really good and rich country for living so uh, if you want to live somewhere in Europe I should just recommend you Hungary especially it's really nice so we are heading to Hatvan we are almost there uh, I want to mention to you that Hatvan it has uh, over uh, 40,000, uh, population of 40,000 
people uh, are living there and the hot one is basically a huge agricultural and railway station center an agricultural center because uh, as you can see these surfaces are really great for all uh, agricultural yeah things to make there so you uh, basically hot one was always the center in all the previous times uh, settlements for the peasants especially middle ages uh, Hungarian peasants have a really great rule in here and Kingdom of Hungary had a really great appointment for peasants here and they have really great rights here so we are going to continue our story about ha uh, Hatvan and living in Hatvan once we get there so see you from Hatvan train station guys and guys here we are finally in Hatvan we got here it is uh, almost uh, noon uh, it is uh, almost 12 o'clock so we are going to start immediately streaming the city, the city. so here you can hear uh, the trains the trains uh, from here are going to Budapest yeah, the main train station you can hear yeah. so here we are at Hatvan train station the main train station was built uh, uh, before first world war it is basically built uh, in 1911. Uh, you are going to see the history of the railway station. This rail station is really important because it is connecting uh, Hatvan with Budapest and all parts of Hungary. You can get from here to Ar Ar Arad, to Budapest and all the main cities, Debrecen and Westprem. It is really important railway station. You can get to Slovakia from here. So I'm going to show you the old station. Now. We are going there. So here we are guys and girls, we are on old uh, Hatvan train station and it was built uh, in uh, 1911, it is one of the oldest train stations uh, in the whole of Europe, it was built before First World War, as you can see it is in bad shape right now, but uh, it was uh, like a little palace back in the day, uh, it had a huge, uh, it was hugely ruined by First World War and Second World War and uh, one uh, correction, I told uh, in the train that Hatvan has uh, 40,000 uh, 40, population, no, it is uh, around 20,000 population, so here in Hatvan you can see the old station and the old flag of Hatvan, El Staru Zastavu, Hatvan with an old flag, uh, flag of uh, railway in uh, Hungary, it is all in black. Yeah, because it reminds uh, on the uh, First World War and Second World War, where Posjeća na Ratove, znači, tu se dešavali, to znak tuge, ili tako, za stradanje, mnogo veliki broj ljudi. Many people were killed here, and this, everything was destroyed in these parts of Hungary, because of, yeah, out from Hungary, yeah, they were attacked, they were attacking the neighborhood countries, and uh, in the, First World War had a huge one. So here we are, I already mentioned to you this flag and uh, you can see that the trains uh, are going uh, all the time. Uh, the main trains to Budapest, you can get to Budapest pretty fast here. It is approximately around uh, 40 kilometers, 40 kilometers, so from here you can train really fast, you can get to Budapest. So we are going to try it go from this train station to the city to, to the town center and as we progress uh, to the town we are going to show all the important uh, locations and we are going to speak about history there when you get of that one so let's go to town man. so guys and girls here we are uh, we are going from the train station to the town center and this is the main way and now we are going through the, this street, this street uh, leads to the town center. So here we are. Yeah, the weather is so bad right now. But what should we do? to get better. So here we are. This is the main street. Uh, we are getting to the town center. And as you can see, this is the industrial zone of Hatvan. Here, so many fabrics are here. Uh, the most famous fabric company we just got uh, to Hatvan is uh, Samsung Samsung yeah Samsung from Korea they have their 
center in uh, Hatvan and they are working for Slovakia and we already talked about Samsung uh, when we were in Bratislava so they are making here television TVs and they are sending it to, to Slovakia so here you can see the old factory this factory is uh, uh, also from the beginning of uh, 18, 19th century uh, 20th century so it is built uh, around uh, in uh, tent here there is today in the uh, Torana fabrica and they were making uh, vehicles basically vehicles the old the uh, buses the cars and in these times and guys you can see the factory uh, it is the factory for vehicles it is basically from the beginning of uh, of uh, 20th century it was built in uh, and opened officially opened 19, uh, old. So here we are at the old factory and uh, as you can see uh, uh, the architecture is really old, it's basically the Romanticism, uh, it has influence uh, on German and Austrian Romanticism and these types of fabrics uh, in architecture are similar basically like in Austria because it's part of Austro-Hungaria and it, is, it has really great amount of uh, platforms here and this uh, giant filter is one of the oldest filters uh, in the whole Europe it was built uh, in the beginning of uh, 20th century in uh, 1902 so as you can see it is pretty high tower it is approximately around uh, 15 meters so it's really nice to visit you can basically visit it yeah it's like a, a really nice tower again generally and really old yeah, this coat. So here we are, we are by the Kantin Castle or Kirai Kastel. Uh, it is one of the oldest cast castles in the whole Hatvan. Uh, yeah, uh, it was built during the reign of Franz Josef, yeah, basically in the uh, 19th, uh, 19th century. So it was uh, originally made for for royal royal family but they were never here and as you can see the whole castle is ruined it's like horror, horror castle right now and it is uh, in ruins uh, but it was really beautiful back in the days when it was built it was built uh, in, uh, in the year 18, uh, 1877 so it, re it represents really great examples of uh, Hungarian historicism, historicism in architecture. So as you can see, it has a huge influence of the medieval castles, medieval and baroque castles, like mix of medieval and baroque. Like in baroque, Srinjevekovne, or in our Serbsky Panovne, Trećen Božić, Manidan. Here you can see uh, the main facade. The main facade. Uh, was made in Rundbogen style. Rundbogen style is a really great style of German Romanticism. Yeah. So here we are at the main facade of the whole castle, Okay, Kastel, uh, hunting castle. As you can see, you can here see the whole tower. Streams. This tower. This is a uh, historicism. It was made in medieval style. Of the tower. It is similar, like in Prague, in Czech Republic. You can. See this type of tower is also so similar and this main facade uh, is so gothic uh, it's like neo-gothic uh, uh, style and uh, it is really nice for every fan of uh, fantasy fantastic uh, epic fantasy and medieval you should visit this this abandoned castle and it has a special spirit yeah the vampires are living there no i'm just kidding there are no vampires so visit kira kester uh, inside it is pretty ruined, but uh, there is uh, some action of European Union. Uh, they are saying that they are going to reconstruct the whole complex, but we will see. Yeah, and this uh, this is the sides, uh, the other, the right side of the castle. As you can see, these two towers are dominating. They are calling, uh, they are called Westworks, so this is all Westworks, Westworks in architecture. They were made originally in Germany, the medieval Germany and France. 
te dve poprečne kule and these uh, towers they represent uh, entrance to the whole complex and basically uh, they have places for basically they had armored uh, the armored and uh, bowmen uh, places for bowmen and armored su simali mesta za ove da kažemo u srednjem veku to bilo strelce gde su stavljali tako smatračice kule the main vestark is called donjon uh, tower but we don't have here donjon it, uh, it is not uh, whole complex whole castle is not medieval style it is very mix so only two westworks gothic and this is crystal castle where castle as you can see it is so abandoned we cannot go fortunately inside but you can see here the main facade it is so medieval style so it's really nice and uh, this atrium atrium is filled with uh, filled with uh, yeah with wood with forest so it is not nice place to be now we are heading, uh, heading for the the main bus station, Hatvan Bus Station. It has uh, old towers, so we are going to get there. So here we are at uh, of, uh, the main bus station of Hatvan, and uh, from here you can get uh, pretty pretty fast to Budapest. And uh, I am pretty sad about uh, the destiny of Crystal Castle, Crystal Castelli or Hunting Castle, it is a bad shape, but here we are. This is an autobus station, it is one of the, it's not so big station, but uh, the main highlight of this station is this giant tower. This giant tower is uh, basically uh, approximately around 20 meters high. This uh, tower was made during the Second World War, it was basically the main armored uh, tower for German and Austrian and Hungarian forces. They uh, just uh, took their arms here. They just, uh, yeah, their cannons and their uh, the anti-tank uh, artillery, and they were all here. Znači, artillery su tu čuvali, čuvali su ovaj so it's a very important tower and basically in uh, these two main world wars uh, it connected basically the Hungarian nation with, uh, with war so it's a re really like a really, really great monument to the wars so basically yeah a really awesome military depot and tower you should just see it. Uh, you can climb uh, at the top of the tower, you have basically, you, yeah, you have 20 meters, it's high and you need to walk uh, all until, inspire, all until uh, the top of it, so it is not, it's not so close, the top of, okay, let's see. So it is really nice, and, uh, really high, and it's really high, you know? Cool, so you cannot visit tower, fortunately. But what should we do? Very nice. Because how many places? Yeah, Koko ima strato. Five or six. Pushes ima elevation of six. So that's it. Now we are heading for the town center because nothing more. <coughs> So here we are from the other side, you can see the whole tower in here uh, and uh, it has all the top of it uh, places for basically walking your own free route so now it is not unfortunately open but you can visit it some, sometimes uh, today we cannot visit it because it is uh, probably Sunday and because it is a rainy day and there is no market today unfortunately but Huge recommendation for this. So I already mentioned to you at the train station that it is a huge uh, railway center. The here was made the oldest uh, railway in the whole Hungary and this train behind me is like a monument to their uh, railways and uh, it represents the bombardment, basically bombardment during the Second World War, the bombardment on the whole area when the whole city was ruined, basically, I already mentioned to you. So, 
uh, this uh, train was from these times uh, this is basically a locomotive from yeah from the second world war which only survived here and we are in a preživela kažemo to bombardovanje veliko kad je bilo u drugom ratu znači lokomotiva je monument cel stradanje celog grada to monument for the whole city so allied forces the russian forces uh, Soviet uh, forces of Soviet Union they bombarded the uh, Hatvan and they destroyed all save everything uh, and the train station descended and uh, the train station uh, was here and it was not destroyed and this train basically was one of the oldest monuments uh, mechanical monuments of the whole Hungary you know nice stary monumenta što se tiče mehaničkih mađarskih tako da evo ljudi za this whole park park complex is really nice to place to be and to rest uh, with your families with your kids kašom decom sa familijom ovde da odmarate and you can enjoy this awesome locomotive we are loco loco locomotive yeah so here we are at the main park of Hatvan it is really nice place to, to, to be, you can rest here and play with your kids and you can see there are two or three locomotives here basically and you have also skate park, stream this, you can see skate park in here so if you like skateboards and if you ride skateboards and rollers and it's really nice place so huge, huge recommendations and uh, for little kids also playground you can see your little kids you can play here and also uh, for a big kids like ourselves you can play basketball here play basketball I haven't mentioned you the in my video I speaking uh, always about sports I will continue of cut one so here is the basketball playground yeah and here we are at the basketball playground uh, I already mentioned to you that uh, Hungary is really great in different sports but they are not so great in basketball they were in the past and this whole uh, surface here this court was a huge donation by NBA by American National yeah the best league in the world and they gave Hungary this uh, whole uh, uh, the, this whole uh, play field this is for basket for mini basket three on three so Hungary is really great right now on 3.3 basket as a nation they have a good selection three na three of basket they played against Serbia also so this is one of the main courts in Hungary or one of the main terrain in Mađarsk where they play basket as you can see the new uh, baskets are here and during this you can see here the official the official logo of NBA and spouting here. It is a donation from American colleges of basketball, NBA, a lično, znači donacija. To u Srbiji ćete redko videti. Stream this. At to ima ovdje se nalazi. This is official logo of uh, Hungarian Basketball League and uh, Association. To je logo njihove asocijacije košarkaške. The best basketball club uh, of Hungary is in these parts of Hungary. It is from Solnok. Solnok has uh, the best basketball club. Maybe in the future I will stream Solnok. We will see. And Hang Hatvan has a really great basketball team also. They are one of the strongest teams in the whole Hungarian basketball league. Uh, they were ascended uh, after Second World War. They are pretty old. Uh, in uh, 1955, I think. Vespete su osnovani kao klub. So, they had uh, three or four championships, championship titles of Hungary, so they are pretty famous in here. They are uh, the stronger, the stronger teams than uh, from Budapest. Budapest is not so great in basketball. They are better in football. You all know, you all know Ferenc Varos and uh, Ujpest, Doj. So yeah. So here we are. We are heading for the town center and this is the river Tisza one of the biggest uh, rivers in the whole Hungary and the whole Europe you all know that Tisza is river which descends from Ukraine and which is going through Slovakia Hungary Serbia and Romania which is one of the biggest uh, rivers here is not so big 
but uh, when it is winter, basically when, when there is so much snow, it, it becomes bigger. Today it is raining, but as you can see, it is bigger than, you, you, uh, than it used to be. So the biggest part of Tisa river is basically in Serbia. You can see in Vojvodina, uh, the biggest part of Tisa. Here in Hungary, they are not so uh, large. It's so, not so large, it's so long, yeah. but uh, it's pretty. Yeah, you can uh, walk here from this green bridge. This is called Green Bridge. You, you can go. It's pretty peaceful, and really nice to walk beside the river, and you can basically fish, fishing. Yeah, then it's a nice time during the spring and the summer. Yeah, yeah the river Tisa. I haven't mentioned to you the name of uh, river Tisa derives from the Hungarian number ten. The Hungarians, uh, they are calling the number 10 Tis. Tis. Tis is number 10. So basically, why is Tisa called number 10? Because uh, it has 10 parts of descending uh, their water. They have 10 parts. Uh, during Hungary, during uh, Serbia, uh, Ukraine and Romania, 10 parts of the river. So, uh, Slovakia. Uh, it is uh, divided into 10 parts. So it is really nice. Yeah, here we are, uh, we are crossing the hunting uh, park, uh, the Madaj park, uh, I have already mentioned to you by the hunting castle, Hatvan was a huge place uh, of hunting deer here, Yelena, so the, uh, it is a really great place for hunting deer, so in the Austro-Hungarian, during the Austro-Hungarian rule, uh, the royal family, they got here to hunting, yeah, so we are going to visit hunting park. He was ruling the Hungary, Kingdom of Hungary during the 14th century. As you can see here, uh, he was living in the 14th century, in uh, 1350 to 1393. During his reign, they got their rights with uh, a Hungarian, as a Hungarian church. On his Atom Proglasian Hi guys, here we are back. Uh, we had a little rest because we were hungry and low on battery and here we are back. Now we are swimming the center of Katwan. Yeah, uh, as I'm uh, speaking about Katwan, I will just uh, uh, tell you that uh, the Katwan, the name of the city Katwan derives from the Hungar Hungarian number 60, uh, which means 60 Katwan on Hungarian, yeah, number 6. So it is really interesting. Why is it called like that? Because during the reign of Maria Theresia uh, in the uh, 18th century, Katwan was one of the... Uh, he was sixth, uh, sixth uh, city which get in that their independence. So here we are. As uh, for the history of uh, Katwan, uh, Hatvan was a big, uh, as I just uh, told you, railway center and a big agricultural center during the reign of 18th century and Maria Theresia, yeah, we are going to see here at the center, uh, it was the place of great castles, it was really rich uh, from 70, 70, 77 uh, year, the city flourished in 18th century during the Maria Theresia reign and Get, got his power and you are going to see all of these palaces in the center of the city were built during those uh, period uh, during the reign of Maria Theresia and during the reign of King Joseph so his, uh, this is the main street uh, this is uh, called the uh, Lajos Kosciuk street of the famous Hungarian revolutionist we just talked about him in the Asbury video uh, he, uh, he was fighting uh, for freedom and independence of Hungarian people during the Hungarian Revolution in 1848 and it is believed that he was currently stationed here in Katwan, he was living here in Katwan. As for the Katwan, Katwan was the place of other nations. The other nations were living with Hungarians here, Slovaks and Croats, which is interesting. We are going to see 
uh, the castle of Croatian uh, noble, which was called the uh, noble family, which was called uh, Grasalkovic, the Salkovic family. We are going to get there, but uh, before that, we are going to show you <coughs> shopping zone. Yeah, we are going to show you shopping zone next. Here uh, is the bakery, the, 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 the best bakery in the whole city, huge recommendation. Uh, Leoniti Beksek. Uh, I think the, the Albanian uh, guy is uh, the main owner of this Beksek. You can eat here pretty cheap uh, all of these uh, bakers and uh, you can uh, buy bread for a very sort of cheap uh, price. The Hungarian bread is really great here for huge recommendation. Here we are, this is the, the, the shopping, shopping zone, the main shopping zone. You can buy some different things here. Uh, you can buy pretty much everything cheap, but it is Sunday, so nothing is working, unfortunately, but it is a market day, Russia day. Russia day, or so Hungarian Russia day is Sunday. So here, you can buy basically the cosmetics and uh, plastic, it's plastic. So here we are, uh, we are at the city center, we are entering city center, here uh, on my frontal side, I'm gonna pass this semaphore, you can see in the main post office, Posta, main Posta of Hatran, it is really old uh, building, it is building from uh, 18th, uh, 19th century, one of the oldest post offices uh, in the whole Hungary, it was made in uh, neo Barak, neo renaissance uh, style, as you can see, and uh, with uh, Hungarian, some Hungarian style of uh, facade, that's a facade of Majesco. It's like a mixture of French palaces and uh, Austrian, Austro-Hungarian palaces, but it mixed Francis with the Austro-Gersky palace program. So basically, it was made by during the reign of Franz Josef. Well, yeah. So here we are. We are by the post office. We are going to uh, get to the Grasalkovic castle. This is Grasalkovic Utsa, the one of the main street uh, of uh, Hatvan. We are going to speak a Grasalkovic family. Grasalkovic family was most prominent royal family here in Hatvan. They had their castle. You're going to see castle front of us. Uh, in front of us, uh, they were a really great servant of Maria Theresia and, and the Tsar Yo Emperor Yosef. So basically, uh, the, they are descendants from a Croatian family, which get there from uh, Vojna Krajina, yeah, from parts of Osijek, here in Hatvan, and they were basically, they were giving their governance of this territory, of the whole territory of Katwan. So they are most famous <coughs> sorry, family. So uh, they made Katwan huge uh, during the 77th uh, in 18th century. They were really huge. Uh, they uh, were a rich family and uh, really great merchants. Family of really great uh, merchants. And they were one of the most richest uh, families, royal families in whole Hungary. Kingdom of Hungary is the capital of Hungary. Here is the Krasalkovic castle, the castle of the royal family of Hatvan. They are, Croatia, as I mentioned already, Croatian uh, family, family of uh, rich merchants, and they were really huge here. They, uh, in, during their reign of Hatvan, uh, the whole city flourished. It was one of the most uh, important merchant centers of the whole of Hungary because Hatvan had a really great position it is uh, close to Slovakia Slovakian border and Austria also Budapest, North of Bar and Austria so they connected uh, with their caravans they connected the royal family of Grasalkovic they connected Hatvan with all parts of uh, kingdom and of uh, empire so as you can see the whole building was made uh, in Baroque style. It, it is one of the most beautiful palaces or castles in the whole Hungary. It is called the Salkovic Mansion. Uh, it was built in uh, 18th century during the reign, of course, of Maria Theresa in 1770. 1770. 
you know, since Sandeste godine podignuta, and uh, the royal palace was finished uh, in 1795 during the reign of, of course, Emperor Joseph, uh, Joseph II. So here we are. Uh, I already mentioned that it was finished during the reign of King Joseph II, the son of Maria Theresia. He was a really important figure for our history. Serbian and create Croatian history. He uh, he gave uh, rights to Croatian and Serbian people with these privileges. So, uh, royal family of Grasalković, they are huge uh, parts of. They had huge uh, uh, roles for this independence of our people, of our Croatian people. So you can see it's a huge Baroque palace inspired by Hoover. Paris also, so it is similar. And uh, all of the palaces during the 18th century were made in this period. It is Baroque classicism. And uh, this palace is similar uh, to Castle, it's like Little Chambron, similar to Castle Chambron. In Vienna, you're gonna see Chambron in the next month, probably, and we are gonna get to. Uh, in February, as you can see, the whole, uh, whole so this is the main facade and main uh, castle gate of Grasalkovic uh, Royal Castle. So basically, you can see here uh, really great uh, ornaments uh, at the main front, frontal facade of castle. Uh, you can see the main coat of arms, in the main coat of arms of Hungary, also Hungary. We have one in Willem Maustrugarske, Tabuske Monarchia, on the top of it, and you can, uh, this main train uh, is inspired basically by Italian, Italian castles in these times, and all this garden is really greatly done. You can see the reindeers, reindeers are uh, sculptures of reindeers uh, in the whole complex, and uh, they gave uh, the whole uh, palace. Really great, really great spirit. Because these parts, I already told you, was a hunting uh, a parts of Hungary. Yeah, they were hunting deers here. Those forests are really great here. So this is, yeah, I can tell that this is said that this is one of the best, the most beautiful uh, Baroque palaces in the whole Hungary. So you should visit it. I don't know if it is open. I think it is closed, that you cannot visit it. Unfortunately, but what should we do? Some other time, probably just enjoy this beauty. Yeah, this is perfection, in my opinion. Oh. Now we are going to head. Uh, now we are going to head uh, to the main, uh, to the main uh, city uh, city market and basically main cathedral. We are going to show you uh, the basically clock tower. Yeah, of this uh, city. Well, so here we are, we are by the main town hall, uh, the Gorsalkovich house or Baros Haza. I can't mention that their uh, castle, basically their mansion uh, was more for resting when it stood Marali and this is the main town hall where they were living. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this castle mansion is now uh, called Zygmunt's Museum. It's now a museum and you can visit it. Uh, they have a really great collection of uh, art historian artworks. So, yeah, it's now the museum, but it's not open, their castle. And now we are heading for the city hall. City hall. And now we are heading for the city hall, uh, the main the town hall, or as they, Magyar, they are calling it Varos Haza, which, may, uh, which means uh, city hall, basically, on Hungarian. Varos is city on Hungarian and Magyar, on, on Hungarian language. So you are gonna see, we are gonna show you uh, the main town hall. It is made in, uh, basically, it's not Baroquian style. Yeah, it's Baroquian style, but uh, it is inspired by Romanesque architecture, medieval Romanesque architecture. So you're gonna see uh, the huge colonnades at the main facade. So we are gonna get there, yeah. So here we are by the main city hall. Yeah, this is called uh, Varos Haza, and as you can see, it is really a uh, nice architectural palace, and it was made uh, in design, I already mentioned to you, uh, by the Romanesque medieval architecture, 
and it was inspired by Italian uh, architecture from medieval, uh, basically from Toscan region, from Toscana. Uh, the palace is from Siena and Florence, Firenze and Siena, you know, palate. It was inspired by Italian palaces. So one of the most beautiful buildings here uh, uh, in uh, Hatvan. It was made uh, uh, and yeah, uh, I already mentioned it was built uh, during 18th century also, but it was rebuilt uh, two or three times uh, because it was destroyed two times. One was rebuilt in 18th century, uh, 19th century, and uh, the second time after the Second World War. War. Uh, this is rebuilt. Uh, Castle from the Second World War, and as you can see, uh, it has really interesting facade. On the facade, you can see some of the important figures of Hungarian history, Hungarian rulers, most important the Magyar, the Nacelik Hatan, and the city governors. Here you have a Hatan. You see what it is. Uh, yeah, the old uh, Hungarian warrior when they were not Christian. We have uh, the king Zygmunt Luxembourg. He was really dominant figure. He, he was ruling this uh, lands during 15th century. We already talked about him. Then you have what is who is he? Or Jadis or Jules? Jul, Jul, yeah, the Hungarian king. And at the end, this is Hatvan Isata. He was a city governor in 18th, uh, 19th century during 1849, and he was revolutionist. He was fighting against Vienna's uh, rule, governor. So, to a prominent figure, prominent figures on the top of it. And the main facade is, as you can see, uh, the main gate is all connected with these awesome colonnades, Italian style of colonnades. So, as you can see, it is really great, inspired by Italy. So now, we are going to head for the main cathedral to Saint Adalbert. Church, yeah, Church of Saint Aldebert. So, let's see you there, guys and girls, from the Saint Aldebert Cathedral. Town hall represents a really great uh, examples of Hungarian architecture, and uh, the most prominent figures uh, from Hungarian history are here, as I already mentioned. So now I think that you can visit it. I don't know how much the ticket costs, but it's like a museum, also like. Uh, basically similar like mansion of Grasalkovic so it is a really nice place to be and as you can see uh, it is a big complex and everything is uh, reconstructed during the because of European Union the investition of uh, European Union and Victor Orban so uh, really really great Romanesque uh, medieval type of palace so you should see it by yourself yeah we are heading for the cathedral now so you just saw uh, the main city town hall, you saw Grasalkovic mansion, and now we are on the main uh, town square, as you can see this is the main square, you can rest here, you can meet with other people here, so uh, we are going to walk through this part and we are going to show you the main monuments and cathedral also of St. Adalbert. So we are heading for this monument first, we we'll go there. So this is the monument uh, on St. Kirali uh, or St. Joseph. So basically uh, it is a huge memorial to all the victims uh, of Hungarian revolution during the uh, 19th century in uh, 1848. Many uh, great fighters and warriors uh, stood for their freedom. They gave their lives uh, for the freedom of Hungarian nation. So it is believed that this is one of the most important national monuments in all Hungary and it represents the national identity of Hungary. So uh, it was built uh, by famous Hungarian uh, sculptor uh, Emre Yosef uh, during the, uh, 1849, as it said on the monument. So it's a huge uh, monumental complex and people from Hungary, they are coming here from Budapest also to give uh, their memorial. To, to all the Hungarian people and they are give, uh, bringing branches, they are bringing uh, flowers here. It's like a huge monument to the whole city. And uh, from this uh, part of the town we are heading for cathedral and then we are going to show you 
uh, these streets here, main streets of Hatvan. But it is closing, we are closing to dark now, so we must hurry. Let's go to cathedral right away. And here we are, this is the really great represent of Hungarian uh, revolution and Hungarian nation, these flags, these are Hungarian national flags and these are all the Hungarian flags when they were losing their independence, they get, got their independence from Austria basically and they were separated country, you all know, after the First World War they lost so many territories but uh, they kept, uh, they saved their flag as you can see and this flag is a bit different than the modern flag of Hungary you can see coat of arms is different. Here we are, we are at the cathedral of St. Adalbert, the one of the most beautiful churches in the whole of Hungary. It was made also during the raid of Maria Theresia in 77, like everything here in this city. So it's really great bar Baroque church. As you can see, it has really great uh, watches, clocks uh, on the main Zabat, on the main. Uh, Couple, uh, and you have also from uh, all sides basically it is really great connected and the main facet is done uh, perfectly uh, it is similar like many many churches in Vojvodina cathedral main facet everything is uh, really perfectly great we combine uh, they use the, uh, the marble the best marble from uh, Vienna and Budapest Pest County so uh, church is a really great represent of Baroque architecture and uh, it is a really great church to visit during the old, old, old uh, part of the uh, day. So basically I hope so that it is open because if it is open we are going to get inside. Yeah, it was reconstructed three, two times. Yeah after the Second World War and uh, in 19th century, uh, 19th century also. Yeah, so one of the greatest uh, donors of this uh, and patrons of this uh, uh, cathedral was, uh, as you can see, man, it is mentioned here, it is uh, Jose Petteri. Jose Petteri was one of the greatest uh, businessmen during the Hungarian revolution so he got a pretty uh, great amount of money for rebuilding this church so uh, he made all this in uh, his patronate he made all of these sculptures and monuments yeah here near the near the uh, church so Saint Adalbert who is Saint Adalbert Saint Adalbert uh, is a really important Catholic uh, saints uh, Catholic he uh, took his life for uh, for faith for Christianity, so he was a uh, really important. Basic, he was from Ger Germany originally, on his Nemački original. He was a uh, really great patronate of uh, Christianity and uh, Catholicism. He took uh, Catholicism to Hungary and all of these parts, Slovakia, and why, that is the reason why he is so important. And this church represents him. So. Now we are going to show you the monument, yeah, here. This is the monument which I talked to you about. Uh, this is a Baroque monument which represents uh, on the top of it, you can uh, see uh, the Saint Adalbert. He, he, yeah, he was, he took, they took his life with uh, bows. He was fighting, uh, basically, he was for German Catholicism, he was fighting against Romans and bravely and uh, as you can see he took bows in his chest yeah he represents a really great sense from the early medieval times so this sculpture represents him and uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the monument you can see uh, yeah this Saint Adalbert and the holy holy governor Saint uh, Saint Joseph so Saint Stephen Saint Stephen he was protector of Hungarian nation so all of their figures are really great represented here and uh, you can see here a really great Baroque sculpture yeah, also from 18th century. Now we are going heading to the uh, one of the other palaces and the main streets uh, of Katwan we are going to show you. Yeah. 
So this is the monument of Saint Imre Herzeg. Saint Imre Herzeg uh, was one of, of course, also saints from uh, Hungary. He was uh, the nobleman, nobleman from the 15th century. Yeah, from the more early Renaissance times. Uh, he was a really great patron of the whole uh, Catholic Hungarian Church here and a really great uh, nobleman. Uh, he governed these lands during 15th century and they got, uh, he got his independence with Hatvan and uh, all of this region from the royal, from the royal uh, kingdom of Hungary, yeah, from Zygmunt Luxembourg and he got uh, the statues of the city, he was a city governor yeah, during this time, uh, got uh, the statues of free uh, city of Hatvan from Zygmunt Luxembourg. So it is one of the most important figures from uh, times of Zygmunt, uh, who were governor ruler of these lands of the northern uh, kingdom of Hungary, northern parts, and this uh, sculpture honors him. Uh, and is, as you can see, it is also built uh, during, I think that it is during the 7th to 8th, uh, 18th century, yeah, uh, so here you can see the really great standing uh, sculpture with the Muslim figure and he uh, he's a man of honor he's basically saluting to his forces he was also a really great general general he was fight, fought, fighting for freedom of Hungarian nation all the time yeah and he fought against Turkish forces also so he was really great and successful as a general and as a city governor and as a nobleman, yeah. So this here is his house. It's called Yarash Biro Biroshag. That is basically a little palace, which is uh, my, one of the main government palaces, parliament palaces of Hatvan. It's like uh, the main uh, government house, government office, the main city house of Hatvan. So now it is closed because it's a Sunday. Uh, and you can see the politicians from this region, from Hatvan, and city governors, they are all heading here on this are par like parliament palace, they call parliament palata. So now we are going heading to the main street of Lajos, Kosho, the revolutionists, we are going to show you the typical Hungarian uh, buildings, uh, typical city buildings of Hung Hungarian cities from the 19th century. So here we are. Uh, we are in the main street of uh, Lajos, Kosut Lajos there, Lajos Utsa. So now we are going to show you the typical Hungarian buildings from the beginning of uh, 20th century and uh, 19th century. So here we are. This is uh, the typical building, as you can see with this facade, Hungarian building from the past uh, times. It was built in Hungarian secession uh, style. Everything is Everything is really has this strange and uh, really, really, really strange, uh, let's, let's say, uh, facade. Yeah, and it's made in uh, German romanticism style. Actually, all uh, typical Nemec romanticism still uh, German romanticism, which was incorporated in Hungarian architectural style. So let's just pass here. So here we are, we are gonna finish here our tour of the uh, city tour of Hatvan and hope uh, by telling you that this is uh, also Eastern Europe, Eastern and Central Europe and uh, as you can see uh, they have parts of the city uh, like Budapest also they have these blocks, uh, communist blocks uh, where uh, they are living, uh, the flights are pretty cheap here. This is a social realist uh, buildings like in Serbia and Belgium. You can see these buildings. So it is similar. Uh, many people are living there because they don't have enough money to pay for the flats uh, at the city center. So what can you say about this city? It is uh, small but picturesque, beautiful city. You should visit it, by the way, to Budapest. So now we are heading home, we are back into Yasberin. All the best guys and girls and see ya in the next video, see ya! Alright guys, I am back, uh, I can't finish yet, so 
to for the end of this stream I want to see just uh, everything. Here are the blocks uh, people are living in these flats and the workers for Samsung also they have the flats for Samsung and for Sanjin so this is social realist uh, buildings similar like in Slovakia yeah in Hungary it is similar so you can get pretty cheap here uh, flats for a low cost of money so what should we say to you guys uh, this is Hatvan it is not big city but it is really nice once again i wish to uh, tell to you uh, for the next video for the next vlog we are planning to stream vienna the capital city of austria so see you there guys and girls here we are we are at the train station of uh, hatton we are returning to yasberg in our bus uh, uh, is going to travel from uh, six o'clock yeah so we got our tickets here are the tickets to Yasberry, so tickets, and this is Christmas tree, as you can see here. Is the Christmas tree, yeah. and this is the interior of the uh, main train station of Hatvan. It was built, as you can see, in the beginning of 20th century. It is a huge palace. It is not only a uh, train station. It is really beautiful. As you can see everything is made in the romanticism spirit, and you have these sculptures at the top of the the whole station is one of the most beautiful stations in Hungary yeah, because uh, yeah, Hatvan is railway first railway was built here in Hatvan and uh, Hatvan is really important as a railway city so, so, just go. so this is interior as you can see it's like a huge palace it's not like a train station so it's really beautiful uh, beside uh, Budapest uh, Kedeti Pajodvor, this is one of the most prominent train stations and it is connecting all parts of Hungary with it. Great, and uh, this atrium is here, reminds of Gallery Uffici in Florence and you know, like many galleries in the whole Europe. As you can see, you have here a railway museum, we are going to see train museum and railway museum, we are passing right through here, so we are going to show you briefly. This so this is uh, basically uh, the railway museum, museum of uh, Hungarian train and uh, railway and you have here the photographs, photos from the old uh, railway in Hungary, the history of railway. So fortunately we cannot enter here because it is closed, as you can see. It's like a museum of trains, so you should visit it when you get to Hatva. So you just got the idea that this is a train city, so what should we see from this beautiful train city? We are turning to our home, to our, uh, to our Yasberin, so see you in Yasberin, guys. Thank so guys and girls, thank you for watching our videos. I will mention at the end our sponsors, uh, my pyre making awesome supplements, my game pets, you should check them out, they're really awesome, all the best for them, all the best for... Valentino watches they're making all brand, uh, awesome brands of watches and you can buy the watches at a 15% discount so you should support them and support IMO Games follow, subscribe and everything other like this video all the best, see ya from Vienna guys see ya